All I wanted to share with you all in this video is why I personally like using TypeScript. Okay, I started off learning Java, which is a statically typed language. Everything is typed, right? So you make a number, you have to type it. You make an object, you have to declare a class and you have to type it. And one thing I would say about that whole experience is in Java, when you need to refactor something, it's super easy in your IDE. You basically rename a file and all throughout your entire code base, it'll fix everything and refactor everything that you need. So that was a beautiful experience. And then somewhere along the line, I decided I wanted to do web development. So I moved into the JavaScript ecosystem and I was actually really, really surprised with how crappy it was, right? You write functions, you have no idea what those functions take in as arguments. You have no idea what they return. You have no idea, like for example, if you have a function that takes in an object, you don't know what properties those objects take in. And basically in order to annotate, you have to do something called JS docs here, where basically you have to list out every single parameter you have to put the type i don't even know how to do this anymore i think a string is actually annotated like this but basically if you have a function that takes in like 12 arguments you basically have to do like a bunch of this crap and then if you have an object you have to do even more stuff so like i'll say like this is some options and then here's options dot um name which could be a string you could have options dot age which could be a number and then over here, you have to say returns. It's going to return, a, I don't know, a string, blah, blah, blah. So the idea is that you end up having to do all this crap just to get some IntelliSense in your IDE so that when you hover over stuff, for example, if I were to go and figure out where this is done, you hover over it, and it tells you some information about the function, what it takes in, what it returns. But there's, there's plugins in your IDE which can make this experience a little bit better. Like, for example, you can see that this auto generates a hex, but it's not grabbing the value because it can't know what the value is. It's JavaScript. How is it going to know that this is a string? So let me take a step back. I first did a bunch of Java, and then I got hired for a front-end project that was written all in CoffeeScript. So everything was dynamically typed, and it was... Go check out CoffeeScript if you've never heard about CoffeeScript. It was a big thing. The whole arrow functions, if you guys have seen this, this is actually first introduced in CoffeeScript and then JavaScript ES6 decided to adopt it because it was so useful. Um, so if you do want a history lesson, go read up on CoffeeScript. And that project worked okay. We had like 10 developers all writing CoffeeScript. And I will say, as a new beginner coming into a project that has no types, it's super overwhelming because you don't know what anything is, right? Once you've been working in the project for a while, you kind of memorize okay this is a certain type of data type i know it has these properties on it and you get used to working in the the lack of types but when you first join a project and you have no context about like the business naming like the acronyms people talk about what is this type of thing what is that type of thing it's just all very overwhelming when you see objects that like don't have any type of definitions so then later in my career i got switched over to an angular js project which used typescript okay and at first I was very annoyed. It's very annoying to have to go through and add types to everything. And this is again, back when TypeScript was more of an, in its infancy. So a lot of the stuff that TypeScript has now was not added to the language back then. But overall, I mean, I just, I felt like there's a lot of friction. Like, okay, I just want to write a function that returns something. And you end up having to do all this extra stuff. Random things will be highlighted in red and yelling at you if you have like no implicit innies turned on in your TS config. And it's just kind of a mess, right? And like, I can understand from a standpoint of a beginner who's never used TypeScript, how it just feels like it's overwhelming and it just slows you down. And it really does. When you're first trying to learn TypeScript, it will slow you down. So I wrote TypeScript for a while with AngularJS. I think that was like a year or two of just bashing with AngularJS and Angular 2 came out and Angular 4 came out. And then finally I got switched over to a React project where the front end and the back end was completely written in JavaScript. And at first I loved it. I'm like, oh, I can move fast. I can write a bunch of code. This is super easy. All of our team was basically just pushing out features super fast. We had tons of unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end uh, -end tests. And I will state that a lot of people say that when you write typed languages, you don't need to write as many tests. I think that is a complete fallacy. Have you worked in a Java project? There are tests in Java project. TypeScript can only verify that the arguments you pass in match certain structure, but you can't verify that the hex matches a particular regex, right? For example, this hex string, it needs to have six characters. This needs to be, um, for example, let's just do like a normal hex string. How are you going to say TypeScript is going to prevent you from having to write tests, right? You still have to have a test that verifies that when someone passes in a string that looks like hello world, 
that this stuff is going to throw and gracefully handle the error if you do like if you're the type of person who likes defensive programming i personally would just let this thing crash what i'm trying to say here is that you still have to write a bunch of tests even if you're using a typed language people who say you don't have to write as many tests with typescript i don't know if they actually worked on like large-scale projects with a lot of people who um are shipping like important software let's let's look at this function i know i'm just like focusing on one function on this entire video but i think you do, like how much more do you guys need right what is having types going to help you prevent from writing unit tests here? The thing that TypeScript helps me know is that if I pass in a string, I get a string back. Well, that's a stupid test. Why would I test that a function takes in a string and returns a string? What I should be testing is that when I pass in the hex of red, I should get back a grayscaled equivalent of that red. Okay, so you're actually testing the logic that's inside the function. You're not testing the typing of the function. So the people who argue that statically typed languages don't need as many tests, I think they're smoking something strong. So again, let's go back to my journey, my history. So I worked in this project um, with React.js, just using JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, and then also using Node.js in the back end. And I've been working on this project for like four years now. And after a certain point, the project gets so large. We have about 400,000 lines of code. I think it might be more now. The last time I, I did a line check was like months ago. And it just becomes much harder to do various things in your project when it's built with a dynamic language, right? In our project, we have a lot of different business entities. And whenever you change a property or a field on those entities, how do you know where to go in your code base to fix that? Okay. Now with TypeScript, if I were to go into a, an object and change the definition or go into a class and change the definition and say that this field no longer exists in the class, my entire editor will light up red and show me all the places I need to go to fix that. So with TypeScript, refactoring is actually a lot easier. Um, that's, that's one argument as to why I think just using TypeScript is a great idea. Refactoring is easy. Secondly, reading and using the code is actually a lot easier. So for example, let's find out where we're calling this function. I can hover over it, and I can see that it takes in a string and it returns a string. And the amount of work I had to do to add that was literally doing a colon here, putting string, and then putting a colon here and doing a string. Now, technically, I don't even need to put a return type here, okay? Because TypeScript is smart enough to implicitly figure out the typing because I'm making a string here because of this interpolation. TypeScript's gonna see, okay, what am I returning? It's a string. So let's just go ahead and automatically imply that I'm returning a string. So notice we get that return type automatically and I didn't have to do any extra work. So. People who say that TypeScript just adds too much overhead and friction, I, I just, it's hard for me to understand what they're talking about because literally all you have to do is just like put a colon and type your stuff. Now, if you're dealing with objects, it's super simple too. Now, instead of this being colon string, you do colon and this could be like a name. This could be an age. There, now this thing is typed as an object. It tells you right off the bat that you're calling this function incorrectly. You can hover over this and see that this takes in a name and an age inside the properties of an object. And if you hover over this, it tells you what you're doing wrong. Let's pretend that this wasn't in TypeScript. What is the flow of when you accidentally call some function and you're passing the wrong arguments? Well, what happens is everything looks fine. This red squiggly would not be there. And you'd run your code. You'd have to go and click a bunch of different buttons in your UI until you get to the specific code path that's trying to run this function and then it's gonna crash. It's gonna throw an error and then you have to go and read an obtuse error to figure out what's wrong. It's probably gonna be like, cannot do something of undefined or null because it's trying to access a string.name instead of an object.name because you're passing a string, but now it needs an object. And it's just a lot of extra time, right? So what you end up doing is when you start working in JavaScript for a long time and dynamic languages in general, before you actually run your code, you end up just looking at the definition. You go up here and you try to figure out, okay, well, this thing takes in an, let's, let's rename this to options. This thing takes in an options. And then you have to go and then go look through the code and figure out what is used off of options. Now, again, this is assuming that you don't have JS docs, right? So if you don't have JS docs, you gotta go and you have to freaking type this thing um, like this so that I can actually look at the function. I can just look at the JS docs and be like, oh, okay, this thing's an object that takes in a name in an age. But at this point, again, like I mentioned, it's like, why not just do this? This is so much easier. Literally just do that 
you have all the typing there for you. I don't have to go and read code to understand what it takes in, right? I don't need to do all that stuff. I just, I just hover over it and I know, okay? So when you're using dynamic languages, you end up jumping around your code, you dive into code, you read code, make sure you're passing it right. And then you also have to do a lot of console logging to make sure that the thing that's getting passed in is the correct thing, right? What ends up happening is, let's say this thing crashes somewhere. What you end up doing is you're like, okay, well, let's just go ahead and, um, let's just go ahead and, you know, console log this like this. And then you go back to our UI, you run your code, it crashes. And you're like, oh, well, it's crashing because I passed in the wrong object. It's like, People don't understand how much extra time they spend trying to debug stuff when they're not using a statically typed language. Okay, so I kind of talked about that point for a long time. Now, the third thing I want to talk about is onboarding. I kind of mentioned this at the start, but after working on this project for four years and watching it grow from zero lines of code to over 400,000 lines of code with 10 developers pushing code daily, I've seen a lot of developers leave the project and us onboard new developers, right? And when you onboard someone new, and they have to go and look through and try to figure out how to contribute to a huge project. Now, again, my project's not huge. It's a medium-sized project, in my opinion. 400,000 lines of code is like medium size. <clears throat> There's some projects out there that have multi-million lines of code. But imagine joining a new code base and being asked to figure out how to change existing business logic and everything is written in, in JavaScript. It's very hard to know what the heck this stuff is because you hover over it and it doesn't have any types. And I'm assuming most people who use JavaScript like probably don't use JS docs either, right? Some people do, the, the ones who've been doing this for a while probably use JS docs. But a lot of people will say, you know, I like using JavaScript because it's easier. I guarantee you they probably don't even use JS docs because if they don't like the idea of typing to begin with, then why would they go and waste their time adding typing via comments in their code? I mean, luckily in our project, we did have JS docs because it was a requirement of the project. But even so, like sometimes those JS docs go out of date because you refactor a function, you forget to go and update those JS docs, and now you just have a bunch of bad comments that tell you a certain way to use your function, but in reality, the function is being written in a very different way. Overall, I mean, like if you were to ask me, hey, Cody, like I'm, gonna, you're going to start a project, you're the senior engineer, you're the, the tech lead, what technology would you pick? 100% I would pick TypeScript, okay? Out of the box, I would just start with TypeScript. I would not even consider using a dynamic language. It's also why many APIs and server languages are statically typed, right? You have Go, which is used for a lot of server and business logic. You have Java, which is huge, used static typing. And it's used for a good reason, right? There's a good reason why you have static typing. Now, I know this video is going pretty long and half you guys, most of you guys have dropped off already, but I do want to mention some of the things that are pretty annoying when you start getting into TypeScript. One of the most annoying things is this tsconfig file. Every TypeScript project has its own special way that they want you to use TypeScript. You have the ability to turn strict typing on or off, allowing implicit typing. Understanding what all this crap does is very overwhelming. I personally don't know what half this stuff is. This is one thing that's very annoying to me. I just try to find a template. I just plop it into my project. And then sometimes you run into errors where you basically have to go and configure this thing and try to figure out what the heck you have to set to get your stuff working. Now, there's people out there who are smarter than me who mastered this file. But again, this is like more overhead. You want to learn TypeScript, you end up having to touch this file at some point, And it can be kind of overwhelming. Secondly, there's something called generics, which can be a little bit overwhelming for a beginner, right? So these little brackets here, this is basically a way to tell the function what the data that you're passing in or what the data that returns out is going to be. So, so in this case, use loader data. This is a remix application, but in order to get data to be typed, notice here that this says this is a room ID of string. In order for this to be typed this way, you have to add in a generic. Otherwise, it doesn't know what data is. It just says it's any, okay? So understanding generics, um, it's kind of super important when you're dealing with TypeScript, and that can be another thing that's overwhelming because now you have to add on more keywords on top of JavaScript just to be able to achieve the typing. Now I will say you don't need this, right? This will still work, but now you don't get any type of type safety here, right? This You could just do whatever you want here and it's not going to yell at you until you start adding in those generics again and then it'll tell you, hey, you're doing something wrong. Okay, so there's a great reason why we have this stuff because of the way the language works. Like you have to sometimes set up generics to allow better type safety. But again, that's just like another mental gymnastic you have to understand. There's more keywords, there's like type of, there's like key of. Um, 
There's like return type where you can actually type it in. You can actually like give it a type of, of a loader if you want to get the return type of this thing, which should probably be like a, there's like type. So I can say type X is equal to this type of loader. So now if I look over at type, it'll say that it is a object that has room ID. So there's more keywords, which again can be overwhelming, but usually unless you're the person writing like a library, you don't need to worry as much about these keywords. Some, sometimes you'll have to dive into this stuff if you like really want type safety. And for some reason, something's being typed as an any and you can't figure out how to like get it untyped as an any. That's when you have to start diving into the more like advanced things. But overall, I would say like 90% of TypeScript is literally just adding these colons after your arguments and you'll get a bunch of type safety. And that by far is much better than JS docs in my opinion. Now, another thing I'll complain about is that it is a little bit slower. I have noticed on a TypeScript project, you have to wait a little bit longer for your stuff to save, for your TypeScript compiler to rerun. Sometimes when you're running tests, for example, in our project with Jest, sometimes running a single unit test, it takes like eight to nine seconds for it to actually import all the modules, transpile those, it runs Babel behind the scenes. There's just a bunch of overhead that's getting stacked on top of each other which really slows down your development process at the cost of having type safety. So that's something you have to keep in mind is that like using TypeScript does have negative side effects, right? It does slow things down. I'm on an M1 MacBook Air and I have noticed that my project in VS Code will slow down substantially sometimes due to TypeScript. Now, if you're on a slower computer, I can't imagine how slow your app must be when you're using something like TypeScript and VS Code. At some points, I even consider switching over to Vim because VS Code is just not cutting it a lot of the times with larger projects. But yeah, I, I just really want to uh, talk about these issues. Um, overall, again, like I mentioned, I, I like TypeScript. I feel like it's made me a much more productive developer. And when I'm coding something without like recording myself, I can just like bust out code as fast as possible because like everything I do is just type saved, right? I have this API object. I forgot what's on it. I just do a dot. I get IntelliSense. Oh, well, I need to do rooms. Oh, I can do mutations. Oh, I could do color cell. And then you're basically like good to go. Oops, I'm calling the wrong function here because it's red. I meant to call something else. Let's just go ahead and, and change it. Oh, I'm not even supposed to be doing a mutation here. I should be doing rooms.queries dot get room there i've done it and notice i didn't have to go and dive into the code at all to figure out like okay what function should i be calling everything was just an intelligence i don't know how else i can kind of convince you and again I, i'm not here to convince you you do whatever the heck works for you and your project but overall after 10 years of being in the industry doing professional web development i would say that i would much rather have a statically typed language than a dynamically typed language. And I'll be honest, every time I dive into a dynamically typed language like Python or PHP, I just wish that I had types to really help me uh, be, be more productive. All right, that's it. I've been talking for a while now, but I hope this was somewhat useful for anyone who's like trying to understand like why would you even use TypeScript over JavaScript? Those are my reasons. Definitely check it out. And if you're watching my channel already, I'm assuming you use TypeScript. All right, that's it. I got a Discord that you're welcome to join if you want to find a place to talk to some other developers or get some help. Uh, like always, have a good day and happy coding.